it's a beautiful day here in Tasmania. Late winter, but we're really starting to feel like spring. Now over the last few weeks across winter, I've been working through the fruit trees, pruning them. I've got quite a few and I don't try and do them all at one go and the weather often won't allow you anyway. So I've been working around them progressively. But now it's time to feed them. And what I have here is a mix of my own making, a mix that I have structured to suit my soil and the needs that we have here. It's built around meat and bone meal and has compost added into it to bulk it out and spread it a little bit so that it's not as concentrated. Hopefully that will deter the dog feeding on it so much because when you just put out the meat and bone meal and it's a bit lumpy on the ground, the dog will come and have a feed. Mixing it this way, I'm hoping to deter that. Uh, so it has more than equal amount of compost added to it. To that, I've also added some gypsum, some lime and some trace minerals. I've used this cement mixer to make this fertilizer mix. Now, it's not the ideal tool for mixing. Some of these things don't combine too well. So I actually found that I had to empty it out, put it back in for a second run to make sure it was mixed quite thoroughly. When you're adding trace elements, you really want it mixed thoroughly so that it's spread quite evenly through the fertilizer that you're mixing. What you need in your area could be quite different to mine. So I'm not really going to give you this recipe. If you're really interested in constructing a fertilizer for your own area, a book I suggest that you read is The Intelligent Gardener by Steve Solomon. He has a lot of information there about soils and what type of nutrients that you need to use. Now, this is somewhat different to what Steve structures in his book, but it's what I have available and so what I'm working with. So with this, I use a couple of big buckets like this and I'm scattering that around the tree, principally in the drip line. And that's where the main feeder roots are. So I go around the tree with a couple of those and give it a good feed. Now, my main message really to people is that fruit trees, we have this assumption that you just put them in the ground, they grow, they give you a crop. But really, because we're choosing the ground, they don't choose the ground, it may not be the ideal soil for the tree that you've planted. So you really do need to consider how you're going to feed it, what you're going to feed it with. Treat it the way you would an animal, which like a cow, it gives you milk, you need to give it nutrition back so that it produces well. And a tree is the same. It can't get up and move to another spot because this soil's not so good. It will send out its roots as far as it can and is very likely to get good nutrition. But trees that are not fed regularly usually start to drop in their actual cropping production. So if you feed them every year, my favorite time is now just at the end of winter when the growth is about to come out, but we're still likely to get some rain. And that's really important because that bit of rain will water this into the ground and very quickly things will start to grow. Of course, with a smaller tree like this, you're going to use a little bit less and probably one of these three kilo buckets full is sufficient. Really, you're measuring the amount to the area of ground that you're covering. And with a smaller tree that has a smaller drip line, you're naturally using less. In a few weeks, later in spring, after doing this and after the rain, the grass is going to grow really quickly. Now, I've talked about this in a past video, that the thing I do is then I come and mow that grass down so that the nitrogen, the fresh nitrogen from the grass growth goes back into the soil and you're building up organic matter in the soil as well. Basically, nothing is being lost. If you have a lot of mulch material available, whether it's wood chips or 
straw or seaweed. You could also feed the trees by mulching that around the trees. So whatever you use to feed your trees, it's really important to remember as spring comes that they do need to be fed. And look, even if you start out with something simple, if it's just some composted chook manure or some meat and bone meal, whatever you have available, even a simple single fertilizer will be helpful. But the more you can do to understand your individual soil and deficiencies it may have, and to correct those, the better the trees will go. And then of course, the better your crop is going to be. And that's what it's all about because fruit trees are one of the easiest ways of producing food. There's really not a lot of effort goes into growing a fruit tree. You plant it, I feed it every year, I prune it every year, and then it's harvest time. And really there's not much in between that's needed. 